this is the left main PCI optimization uh, session. And the driver for the, for, for the idea of having such a session now is actually the ongoing trials, which will be finalized uh, soon. This is one of the two ongoing large, large trials in left main stenting contract cabbage. The Excel trial and the Noble trial, 1,200 uh, uh, patients in Noble, 1,900 in the Excel. Timing of primary endpoint, two years in median, three years. And what is really interesting here is that we can expect both of them to be presented back to back at the late breaking trials at TCT, Monday, October the 31, which is pretty soon. There will be a simultaneous publication of the two trials in New England Journal of Medicine and The Lancet. And I think that after that date, there will be a huge discussion on how to do left main treatment, how to, well, promote the stenting, how to promote education in, in the area, and how to discuss which techniques is basically mo the most optimal in, in that context. So remember that when you have a tapered vessel, it's very dangerous to go behind if you're not aware of it. And having said that, I think we should start the session. Thierry Lefebvre has promised to, to show the presentation by Nicolas Foyne, which is embarking on discussion on which tent, stent types uh, is usable in the, um, in the left main. Thierry. Yeah, thank you very much, Jens. Uh, it's a great honor to present the work of uh, Nicolas Foyne. As you know, he published a lot on this uh, topic. And I really think that... Uh, uh, knowing the characteristic of the stent that you are using when treating the left man is very important. So uh, I have not done this work. It just uh, uh, will try to give you a summary of uh, what he found. So we know that when we do a pot technique, uh, we need uh, it's very important because we select the stent according to distal reference, and then you adapt the side of the stent proximally. So that's why you should know the characteristic of the stent that you are using. Uh, so it was uh, Nicolas' work on that since uh, now seven or eight years. And uh, so this is uh, what we know already, and it was published uh, three years ago. And you can see that uh, according to, for example, with the Xyans, according to the size of the Xyans stent, you have a different characteristics. So the the 2.25 up to 3.0 stent is the same design. So if you oversize the, the, the stent, then you will have a different characteristic as compared to the 3.5 or the 4.0. Uh, if you deploy the stent, and then you can go up to 5.0. But of course, if you try to go up to 5.0 with the 6 cron uh, design, you will have a very poor scaffolding you will have a risk of uh, uh, protrusion of materials through the stent uh, strut, and the effect of the drug delivered by the stent will be decreased. So, if, of course, he had stents out uh, very uh, nicely. This is a comparison because uh, the Xyans Prime 3.0 and 3.5 after a pot and kissing balloon. So, this is a paper which was published in Euro Intervention in 2013, and you can see the different characteristics of, of these stents, and you can notice that uh, uh, the Xyan stent between 2.25 and 3.0 is the same, and then you have a 3.5 and 4.0 is the same. Uh, of course, you look at the maximal dilatation that you can obtain with these uh, stents, uh, it doesn't mean that you can do it, or you should do it. Uh, for example, a 3.0, you can go up to a 5.0, but is it, is it good for the patient in terms of a, a mid or long term outcome? We don't know. Uh, so, this is a summary of what we have. You can go uh, with a 2.5, uh, uh, 2.25 up to a 3 up to 5.0. And if you want to go uh, higher, you, you need a, a different stent. And if you're going to go uh, more, uh, you need a, a bare metal stent, uh, 5.0 or 6.0. So this is uh, data with the new uh, DES uh, platforms. And you can see that uh, 
Uh, with the 4.0, you can go to very high diameter, 5.7 uh, up to 6.0, between 5.3 and, and 6.0. Uh, but of course, you can see clearly that the, the scaffolding is not the same according to different design of the stent. So this is, I think, uh, very important to know, and you can go to this publication uh, uh, by uh, Nicolas. And of course, all this uh, data will be uh, available in the uh, EBC uh, website. Uh, now, if, if you look at uh, the uh, microscopic electronic uh, 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 deformation of the polymer, I think it's also very important, and uh, we know that when you, you go to very high diameter, you may have uh, some uh, problems. This is uh, an example of a limitation uh, to overexpansion in the drug editing stand. This is, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, the stand, uh, the strut diameter is not the same, so this is uh, uh, also the role of the pot to obtain a very good uh, opening of the strut, I will simplify the procedure. And this is uh, data in terms of side branch access, so you can have very large side branch access uh, when you post dilate with a 4-0 balloon, but you can see that the deformation of the structure of the metallic stent is not uh, optimal. So I can conclude that uh, 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 expansion capacity for each stand depends on the model design, as you saw. Uh, there is uh, a risk of overstretching or malaposition when you go to very large diameter, uh, especially when you use, uh, for example, a 2.5 and you have to finish with 5.0 approximately. Uh, the new uh, drug eating stand design, the cutoff diameter between small and large vessel size generally follow previous platforms and are able to expand largely beyond the nominal diameter. This is what we have seen uh, uh, in this test. Uh, Our expansion not only increase uh, MLD and MSC, but also increase the cell size and also the straightening of the struts. Uh, the morphologi morphological change in stent varies between stent platform as well as stent size for a given overexpansion. And finally, side branch access. Uh, most DOS have a large cell opening, so recrossing lo location is uh, more Im important. And uh, the conclusion is that always consider model design in left main. I think it's very important. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Christiansen is going to present a case from the novel study. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, great meeting. I'm going to share with you a case from the screen population of the Nobel trial because I cannot uh, share with you data from the Nobel trial yet. It will be presented at the late breaking at the TCT. So I'll go directly to the case. It's uh, a male. He is in his late 50s and no risk factors. He was admitted after a cardiac arrest and was resuscitated. And uh, he had a very low blood pressure. And this is the end. You're showing a left dominant system and a thrombus in the ostium of the LAD. So he, he rapidly deteriorated. He had a small right coronary artery. And due to this deterioration, I implanted an impeller very quickly, confirmed the result with this bended wire and with GOE before doing the PCI. And this gave a very stable situation. And I did POBA in the CERC and POBA in the LAD. And I got a good flow in both the CERC and the LED, and I took a pause in the procedure and got the surgeons to come into the room and discussed. And uh, we agreed upon doing a cabbage for this patient because of the left dominance. So cabbage was planned later during the hospital stay. The patient was on impeller for two days, and uh, cabbage was planned on day four. But just prior to the operation, the, the surgeon came to me and said, I, I don't want to do this operation because I don't think this LED is good for Lima. It seems to be very infarct-related. So I took the patient over to do a PCI, and I, I decided to do this PCI OFTI-guided. That means I wanted to do an OFTI before the procedure to plan the size of stand and length and landing zones, and during the procedure to control the wire positions, and after the procedure to control the stand expansion and apposition. And this is an um, off the run from the LAD to the left main. And you can see there is some thrombus 
in the LED, there's a plaque protruding in. This is the damage from the balloon, and this is the left main. So I looked for um, a landing zone in the LED, and I looked for a size of the stand. And I did a ofti from the circ, and also looking for a landing zone and the bifurcation and the left main. So I've chose an Osiris stand, stenting first from the circ to the left main with a 3 0 Osiris stand, 30 millimeters long. And after that, I did a pot, 4.5 balloon, trying to go very close to the carina here. And uh, after that, wanted to um, have a distal rewiring. And um, this is after rewiring, and then I'll control my rewiring with an OFTI. And this is the OFTI to control the rewiring. It's not so well flushed, and it's very difficult to see the rewiring here, but this is the wire from the left main to the LED, and the rewiring wire comes here, and it confirms that it's distal. But you should also look very careful in the proximal part. And what I saw here, I had taken the jailed wire out of the LED. My rewiring was surprisingly behind the stent, even though I had done a pot with a 4 or 5 balloon. I was surprised by that, and I tried again to rewire, but I get the same result. I think it was because my guiding catheter was um, a little eccentric in the tapered huge uh, left main that gave me the wire behind the stent. So what I did was put in a guide liner on the wire in the circ and introduced the second wire so I was absolutely sure that I was not behind. And then I could do the rewiring um, and be completely sure that I was not behind the stent. Open to the LED with a balloon. And then my second stent comes here from the LED, just a short overlap in the left main with a 3.5 Osario stent. Uh, balloon a little back and pot again with 4.5 and rewiring of the circ. Again, going for a distal cell here. In the, uh, it was possible finally to go distal here. Confirming again with OCT that I was distal. I wanted to try to avoid too much metal at the carina. Kissing and pot now with a 5.0. I used the information from the OFTI to size the left main. And this is the OFTI result at the carina point. The carina was, in fact, very short, bifurcation region, and in the left main. This is the OFTI from the circ to the left main. I had a good expansion in that position, and a um, good result at the carina point. This is the LED showing the, the small LED with diffuse disease, and... Um, Side branches, good expansion, and side branch again, coming to the carina point and the left main. The two wires here in the left main. The end result, and I think this also confirms that cancelling the operation was a very good idea. This LED is very much infarct related and may not benefit for an operation. So the conclusion in this case is that LM culotta bifurcation treatment with Osiro 3.0 and 3.5 is feasible, and accidental abluminal rewiring is a risk despite doing a pot, and often can be used for evaluating the wire position. And don't let the first stent you put in go all the way to the ostium before uh, when you do the culotte in the left main, because then your guiding catheter will be biased from the jailed wire, and you will have a tendency to get behind the stent. So the first stent should not go to the ostium, the second stent should go to the ostium. This is a teaching point for this. I think OCT learned, taught us a lot about how to uh, improve the technique when you do the left main stenting. So I'm sharing you this case with this teaching point. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. We move to the... To the following case. This will, this will not be EBC men patient because in my uh, place we have not included yet any patient in uh, EBC. I don't know if there is, there is a, a centralized QCA, but uh, I ask uh, if it's possible to have access to any film 
And my, the answer was no. So I will present you something not to show that I, I'm able to do a left man standing, but just to plea again for the fact that we can randomize this, this trial, very complex case if we want. We don't have to, to recuse the randomization because we think that we have to, we always have to begin by the side branch. So it's a complex case. I try to, to do it quickly. So this is a 72 years old woman, diabetic hypertension. She has a cancer uh, 20 years ago as a mastectomy, radiation and chemotherapy. And for that, of course, he's not, the surgeon is not very happy. Uh, she had recently a pleural recurrence. She has chemotherapy. She's not doing well on this side of the problem. But she was uh, hospitalized in our center for unstable angina. So this is a coronary angiography. I will let you see if uh, you lack this. Uh, you think that this left main is a complex one or not. You will see it better maybe at the beginning of the angio. So it is one, 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 maybe a four, one, but the, 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 the marginal branch is not really uh, inside the, the trifurcation. The, the diagonal is very close to the left main. And she has not only this lesion, but this one, very long lesion, proximal mid-segment of the right coronary artery, and also distal lesions with several bifurcations, as you can see here, another one here, so many bifurcations. So the syntax score was measured 28, 38, and the surgeon said immediately no, because of radiation first and cancer second. So he decided to do a PCI. I want, we, during the discussion with my colleague, we decided to do the, the most reasonable. So most reasonable was to treat the proximal uh, uh, right corner artery lesions and to treat the left main and lady diagonal uh, bifurcations. So this is, uh, I, began, I began with the right, and I was surprised that this, uh, when uh, performing the right, uh, RCA PCI, the patient was quite unstable. Uh, she, not, not for a pressure, which was not very high, but uh, for pain and ST, giant uh, inferior ST deviation. So I have to work very slowly, inflating, deflating, waiting for a return to baseline, and then putting a stent. So double, uh, second inflation, this is a stent, as you can see, at that time, we, have not, we had not very long one, for like the 48, for example, so I have to put a second one. And uh, this is uh, the end of the, the, the plan to work on the right corner artery. Of course, there are, uh, there are remaining lesions distally. So now we go to left main. We see even better than the, the anatomy. We have a distal left main, ostial LED, ostial diagonal, uh, intermediate lesion, and maybe not so close, not so proximal in the circ. And all these, all these vessels are small. And so I decided to do a provisional because I'm always doing provisional. So this is French. So I don't, I don't force myself to do a complex technique that I don't know. I know very well this one. So I will, I will show you that this is possible. This is possible if you are cautious. So this is done from radial with a six French. It's three wires there. So this is a predilation with a 2.5. I am better now with, uh, with this result, and the, the patient has no pain. It was very stable for the left uh, uh, PCI. After that, I decided to put uh, not a very long stand. We can discuss, we'll see later, to go more distal in the LED, but I decided to put a quite uh, short stand, and be, maybe not to cover completely the osteum. So this is after inflation, deflation, uh, pseudopot, I call uh, that when uh, I use, for example, a 3, it was a 3 0, I think. Huh? So, um, oh no, 3.5. So I use, for example, eight atmospheres for the, uh, for the uh, deployment of 3.5 and move three millimeter, prox three millimeter proximal to have a pseudo pot proximal to the diagonal, or I go up, up to 80. And after that, I do a formal, a true uh, uh, pot with a 4.0. And after that, I got this uh, result. Now I'm, uh, I'm uh, rebreathing uh, quite, quite, quite better now. And after that, I think, it's, I think it's time now, so two pots, it's time to exchange a wire. So this is a, a bit accelerated, I don't know why, it's not too sure. We see that it's even in the small diagonal, it's very easy to put a wire, very easy. Again, you have to remember uh, that when you are degelling the, the wire in, from the diagonal, the tendency for the guiding is to enter the vessel with a high risk, a very high risk of uh, uh, stand distortion. We have two gel wires there. After that, uh, I thought it was time to protect the, the fourth branch, always six French, always radial, 
with this, uh, uh, it will take a bit, a bit more time here to go to the marginal. It's not a completely proximal vessel, you will see. So, uh, okay, it's going. Not going the proper way. Uh, a puff of contrast, I see that I'm not in the marginal. And now I'm in the marginal. And uh, now it's time to go to treat the diagonal. So I open with a 2.5 balloon, 2.0 balloon. Immediately after that, I did the kiss with this result. You will say me that uh, maybe the diagonal result is not excellent and we can put a 2.75 long stand there. I decided not to do that. After that, I decided to treat the circumflex. So this is a pre-dilation and then the kiss to, uh, key, to give the uh, potential access to the circumflex in case of dissection, for example. What I see is a dissection. We don't have either society in my city. We are in prehistory, not, not reimbursed. So we, I, considered, I considered this lesion had to be treated. So it was a provisional, was randomized a provisional, but I, don't, I think that provisional in left main cannot be like provisional in a LED diagonal bifurcation with a diagonal of 2.2 millimeters. I, I think it has to be an open provisional procedure. If, if you are convinced that you need a second stent, you can put a second stent. It's not forbidden. So this is a T-stenting, another projection. And of course, it is followed by KISS, because always when we put two stents, even with this strategy, you have to do a KISS. So 3.5 and 2.5. And this is uh, the result. Now, I consider that quite acceptable. We can dis discuss on the, on the distal part of LED stent, maybe... Uh, uh, do something uh, more distal on the LED. This is another projection. I consider that if I put a stand distal, then I will have to move to the apex. So I'll leave it like this. And I did what I'm frequently doing, uh, uh, stand enhancement. And you can see that I have now one stand with three diameters, one diameters, two diameters, three diameters. We see very clearly here some projection of metal in the side range, which is the basis of the pro pro provisional stenting strategy. And we see that the, the, the two stands here are in contact together. And after that, I was still not happy. I did the last uh, uh, pot with a 4.5, 8. And uh, this is uh, the, fin the final result, which is considered as, uh, as correct. Not absolutely perfect. We can discuss on tenting the diagonal, of course. But uh, I think it was the most reasonable thing we, we were able to do for this, uh, for this woman. And I, um, I, I want to convince you that despite the, 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 the complexity, you can always use the provisional strategy. You can. You are not obliged, but you can do. Thank you. We will continue with the last case that will be presented by Dr. Van Jeung from the Ideal Left Main. Yeah, thank you very much to have the invitation. After this... Uh, major trials, uh, I think I will present some cases, as, as was requested, about our ideal left main trial. So for the, somebody who doesn't know about the ideal uh, left main trial, we call this the improved drug eluting stance for all commerce left main. So we're not going to randomize versus surgery. I think we will see the results of that in a few on the right arm. So we're thinking that we might, with newer generations, uh, stands do even some improvement uh, using synergy. So we're going to randomize versus the science in an all-commerce setting, and that's also meaning a lot of non-surgical patients. And why are we think these are important? Because on the synergy, you have the abluminal coating, you have an ab uh, absorbable coating, and that might uh, give us the opportunity to have a shorter DPT timing for this stand, even in the setting of left main. I will skip a little bit on the details of the trials. I want to thank all the people who have been helping to do the stand, the, this trial, especially the principal investigators for the different countries who have been very hard working to get all the patients included. So it's a multi-center, prospective, randomized trial, Synergy versus Science, with a clinical follow-up of five years. Um, there is a primary endpoint for non-inferiority on the maze outcomes, but there's also a subgroup of OCTs which we will discuss later, which have a three months follow up. Um, this is our timeline, and we planned it. And finally, I can tell you, we just entered up to September of 2018, where we have to complete 818 patients. This is an enrollment graph. Uh, you can see officially 826 patients, because some patients were having FFR negative left mains who were not treated with any of the stents. Enrollment is completed. Um, so 
what can we tell we after have enrolled all these patients? No, I can just tell you gender and age. That's not so much. Uh, what I can tell you, maybe to the right lower corner, I think that is interesting for us because what I asked to uh, give you is how many procedures were single stand procedures. So that's 78%. This is a use following the EBC recommendations to primary have provisional strategies. Two or more stands in 21 of our patients. Uh, you can see the number of stands per patient per lesion is 1.3. Uh, and then we have other lesions because this is an all comer setting, so we have a lot of complex morbidities. I don't I'm not sure if 0.7 is really complex. Are the additional stents for other lesions? Now the cases. So this is an, one of the patients, 63 year old patient who had a previous uh, PCI of the LAD and you might consider is this a significant left main or not. This is a uh, loop again, some different projections, some still frames, I think a little bit more the AP direction. You can still see that there is potentially a distal left main disease. To confirm this, FFR was done and that came up to 0.71 and the IVUS of the left main showed you 3.9 square millimeters and have this, uh, this still frame, just be, uh, you can see the bifurcation and then you have the proximal left main and based on the IVIS we said this is a non-complex lesion, so Medina 100 is a provisional strategy. So I'll show you, this is a Synergy 3.5, uh, post allotation with a POT, a 408 balloon. Oh, that, that, that's just an enterographically very nice uh, result. So we have two lines up here, the left main pre and the left main post on the IVIS. Uh, now it was 40 square millimeters and then afterwards 8.36, uh, significant increase of course on the IVIS result. This is the follow-up angiography which calls four months but officially it's three months. You can see there's no change in the left main. And this is the OCT per, per protocol. We had the first 100 patients in selected sites were going to have OCT pull back. And we can see, so we, I'm not really happy about what we see in, in during this pullback. There's some flush. Uh, the, the bifurcation is okay, but there's an MLA of seven square millimeters tell you, but proximal, there is potentially some malopposition. I'll show you the still frames. Of course, this is the bifurcation. This is uh, eight, seven or eight square millimeters. And this is the area. So three months follow up, maybe this strut is not fully covered. Um, but more importantly, there's the malposition area recognized. So if I summarize up this case, which I will do in a few seconds, uh, what I did do for this presentation, I pulled up back the IVUS from the implantation. So this is, remember, this is the kind of final IVUS done at the uh, procedure. It's difficult always, uh, we have shown beautiful OCT images today of the left mains. In the protocol we said we will do as much IVUS as possible. And then later at this location you will recognize that opposite the carina, the, there has been uh, some malposition. Although there was a done a pot with a four row balloon, there was, you know, your carina is to the lower right, three o'clock, and then if you come more proximal, uh, you can see that there is still malposition. This is, was, has been the MLA with 180, 360 degrees of calcium, but now on the left upper corner, there is this malposition area. It's not a very extensive area. So the conclusion was not a complex case, distal left main, neutral bifurcation, single stand strategy, but the suboptimal use of IVUS. The IVUS should have shown you that the left main is larger. Now you can show that from the IVUS. I always use the uh, data from Belfast. These people have been doing all the IVUSes of the left main and you see that the average left main is almost fair five millimeters in diameter, up to six millimeters diameters in, in Belfast. So this was done with an undersized pot. And also we did do another study on different expansion and Nicolas Van did do all, all his bench working. What we compared is that how much can we go with the synergy before we started implanting in the left mains. And the 4.0 can go up to six, square milli uh, six millimeters in diameter, but you have to go up to 24 atmospheres to reach that because it's pretty constrained surrounding your balloons, which might be six millimeters uh, at rate burst pressure. Is as long as inside a stent, which is smaller, you're not just like a coronary artery, you're not going to reach that. So a good start coverage was an average for all the segments, except of course the bifurcation area and the malposition, uh, malpose segment. This is a little more complex one, 59 year old male patient, previous PCI of the right coronary artery. And you can see that there's a distal left main, there might be something in ostium of the circumflex. I did do several IVIS images of the LAD. You can see this is at the septal area, 3.7 square millimeters the circumflex of the bifurcation and the four, me four square millimeters proximal to the bifurcation, significant distal left main disease. 
Uh, the ostium of the LED was not that uh, diseased, 5.1 square millimeters. And the cirque, again, 4 square millimeters with a lot of black burden. So based on this whole combination was this said it is at least 101 bifurcation, Medina on the IVUS, and non-osteo-LED disease, the operator decided to have a two-stand approach culotte. Synergy 3.5, a POT 4.0, uh, and then the synergy in the LED and the kissing. And I want to show some IVUS images of this procedure. And you can see that the circumflex uh, I think that is distal, this, the distal to the stent, then uh, the left main area just close to the bifurcation, and you can see the proximal left main is really quite open. Then we have to pull back, and you could come up to the bifurcation, and you will see what we have learned from bench testing. If you just end up with the final kissing, you're pretty much elliptical. We all know that. Um, so we need to have to do the, the, the uh, pot IVUS uh, combination later on. The elliptical, and you can see the bench testing done of um, a synergy with we did do bifurcation with first of kissing and finally a pot. Uh, we have optimized this with a larger uh, pot and then another eye. As you can see, it is circular, and also at uh, three months follow up, it is circular. But you need, if you want to do a kissing uh, initial step, you have two things you have to use optimal size balloons. I calculated that for the six millimeter left mains. You cannot do that with a 3 0 and a 3 5. You're not going to reach the area. You need to have something like a 4 4.5. And then to get circular at position, uh, you need a five or six millimeter balloon, dependent of course of the size of left main. Again, it is high pressure as I had done in the benchmark testing. Thank you for your attention.